Welcome to Eat Theatre, Sleep, Repeat with me, Jed Mills and Hayley Kay, and uh, another special guest for us today. Uh, yes, we are joined by the theatre's new CEO, Adam Knight. So thank you for joining us on our podcast. And I wanted to kick off the interview by asking, what made you apply for the role? When you saw it advertised, what kind of inspired you to go, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it? <laughs> I think... Um... The Grand is an iconic theatre and it's loved by so many people. Um, obviously, the history of the town saving it is is incredibly special, uh, but also the way that artists and actors and performers speak about playing the venue. I'd a- I actually came here for the first time probably about 25 years ago to wow. visit um, someone who's one of my mentors uh, from my hometown theatre and, and we did a tour of the Grand. He showed me around beautiful Matcham auditorium and I was just blown away he'd, he'd moved back to Blackpool um, and I was just really inspired by the building at that point but then looking and seeing how the Grand's developed over the course of the past eight years under Ruth's leadership um, it's an incredibly exciting theatre it's a theatre for everyone and, and the way that the theatre reaches out into the community the way that the programme is really exciting and has developed uh, I think is, is just a it's just a fantastic opportunity and a fantastic opportunity to work with people at Blackpool to to build the next step in the journey of the theatre. Yeah, a lot of CEOs sometimes come from completely different industries, don't they, and try and bring their experience into another sector. But you just saying there about your sort of 25 years ago and mentoring the theatre. So has theatre always been your background? I have, yeah. I've always worked in theatre. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of got involved um, as a teenager, a volunteer at my local theatre, Um, so, uh, you know, selling ice creams for the Saturday morning (laughs) pictures. And then I got a, an acting ASM role on on pantomime, uh, and then got involved in local amateur theater, musicals, drama, et cetera, and went off to train at the national youth theater and the national youth music theater and went to drama school and was an actor for a bit, um, uh, toured in Bill Kenwright's blood brothers. Uh, So seeing the whole country and seeing these fantastic theaters was a great experience, but then really, um, decided that management and producing and running venues was where my heart lay uh, and I, I applied for a management position in, in the West End and was lucky enough to get that opportunity um, and I suppose the rest the rest is history so I've moved moved around theatres managing them since then. I mean it's impressive that you literally have gone from selling refreshments to running venues I think that that's completely completely impressive but my question is then what sort of genres do you enjoy because obviously you know theatre's program are way way in advance you know it's always strange I find it when I come into the grand that people are talking about shows that are months and months away but of course yeah. that's how theatres are programmed but personally then what sort of genres do you like to go and watch? That's a really good question because actually I I really like experiencing lots of things um, so I think the things that really first got me interested was musical theatre and I think that's true for a lot of uh, younger people it's it's a routine um but then you know drama really really i'm really passionate about great stories and and being brilliantly told um and latterly contemporary dance has really really um i found it really interesting it, it's it's just something completely different and not an area of of my particular expertise so i just enjoy watching it for what it is but I always think as a programmer it's not actually about what I like um yes there's there's bits and pieces and you would expect me to to know of companies that, that I think will be interesting for the grand theater stage but it's also about what the audience are going to like and it's about building a balanced program and making sure that there's something for everyone on the stage and I, I hope that's what you'll see as we move forward and hopefully you'll start to see some new companies come into the grand who maybe haven't been represented on the stage before and I think that presents us with some exciting opportunities as well to work with uh, particularly some producers based in the northwest and representing work that's created in the north of England I'm really passionate about that so hopefully we'll start to see some more of those productions coming through as well yeah I, I just want to go back I'm one of these people that goes through phases I don't know about you know like you talk about contemporary dance but I'll go through phase where every show I see is pretty much a musical I'm like yeah musicals for me and then then you might see uh, the woman in black yeah that's for me plays you know or dramas or something and you think is that something similar to yourself as well you just go through phases of watching shows and, and being obsessed with that part and then next week you see something that just lights that flame again I suppose that's the excitement of the theatre as well I think a, a little bit yeah I, th- I think so um 
but but I see a lot as well, obviously for the job. Um, I always think it's important to try and see as much of the work that you're going to try and program as possible. So you, you have an understanding of how it goes down in other places with other audiences. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. We all want to go and see the next new thing. Yeah. So uh, yes, I think on occasion you do get obsessed with it. Yeah. You really want to go and have a phase of seeing some fantastic <laughs> musicals, you know, that, that happens. I appreciate, I'm possibly putting you on the spot here, and I know you've not been in the chair very long, but can you give us any sort of insight into what we might expect to see sort of later on this year or maybe autumn I, I can give you a, I give you a little hint. This is good. Well, this is good. I'll, I'll do, <laughs> I'm I'll, glad I put you on the spot. I'll do two. I'll do two. I'll okay. run over some of the things oh, okay. that are coming up in the mm. summer, which I, which I think are, are going to be really exciting and a must sees if you if you're a grand attender or if you haven't come before, try one of these things out. Okay. So we've got um, coming up in the next few weeks. We've got Joe Pasquale and some mothers to have them. Mm. We've got um, Dead Lies with Hillary, Hillary Bonner's Dead Lies with Jeremy Edwards. Going to be a great show. Um, Animal Farm. George Orwell's Animal Farm, which is going to be an incredible production with um, really exciting puppetry. Um, uh, Michael Morpurgo's Private Peaceful, so that's a great one for children and young families, really moving story there. Um, and Broadway star, and I'm really excited about this, Broadway star Christina Bianco is appearing in The Rise and Fall of Little Voice. And if you don't know Christina Bianco, just Google her. She is the <laughs> woman of a thousand voices. She played the lead in Funny Girl in Paris, uh, just before the world locked down, an incredible talent. So we're really, really excited to have her on the grand stage. And then what I can tell you is, I'm very excited about this. Uh, we've just secured uh, the new uh, UK touring production of the West End and Broadway hit musical, Beautiful, the Carol King musical. Oh, so wow. That'll be coming to the grand stage in October. Wow. Um, so, uh, do you get your tickets for that? It's going to be a cracker of a show. Yeah, really, I mean, really exciting. I think what's clear is there's so much variety. I mean, that, that's what what's what's just jumped out from everything you've said. Complete variety. I mean, having someone like like you know the stars that you've mentioned are are internationally renowned, which is amazing. But then just to have dramas in there, the yeah. the musicals. I think you know what's what jumps out from what you've said is just the variety of stuff that's going to be yeah. on that stage. Yeah, yeah, year. it's a really exciting program, and there's there's much more to come. And as we look to the future, you know, there's some really exciting new companies that we're, we're looking to work with. We will be working again with Gary Clark Company. Um, and some of uh, you watchers and listeners may have seen um, Wasteland, which was a co-commission with Blackpool Brands. So we'll be working on him for a new, with him on a new piece of contemporary dance in the next couple of years. Uh, and some, some really exciting theatre companies that are coming out of Manchester that are sort of new and fresh with some really exciting new ideas. So watch this space. I get the impression... You- you as a, a CEO and the way you've talked about, you know, bringing in northern productions, new productions, giving these production companies a chance. I feel that's what you want to bring to the Grand Theatre. That seems to be this uh, basically a chance. Mm-hmm. And then and then it goes back to your earlier statement that you sold ice creams and now you're a CEO. Someone gave you a chance. Am yeah. I sort of on the right path there with this? Yeah, uh, absolutely. The Grand is a theatre for everyone, and and I really, really mean that and believe that, and I know that the team do. Um, and you only have to look at the, the the broad scheme of work that we do, and we will continue to do the really groundbreaking work we do in our communities in Blackpool, um, the story-led resilience work, the, the really, really uh, transformational work that we do with the Royal Shakespeare Company primary schools. I was at the Winter Gardens yesterday for uh, the International Resilience Conference and talking to uh, the children from Our Lady of Assumption primary mm. school who participated in the Royal Shakespeare Company project and just saying, what do you enjoy mm. about working with Shakespeare? And honestly, the, the answers from these seven and eight-year-olds that brought a lump to my throat, and I'm not going to lie, a bit of a tear to my yeah. eye, because they were talking as if they were 17, 18-year-olds about to go off to university about the power of words that were written four or five hundred years ago and what they mean to them and how they help them build confidence. And and that's just a, a tiny snapshot into the work uh, that Blackpool Grand does. And we're going to be working in many different ways with many different um, areas of the community over the years to come. And uh, you know, I want to make sure that the that the stories that we represent on our stage are representative of of people's lives in Blackpool. Um, and we've got a part to play in, in making Blackpool a better place and I'm really excited about the part that we have to play in that. One of the things that I wanted to ask was that you know lots of people just assume that the Grand is just a place that shows 
come on and go off and there's no one there in the day. There's nothing else that happens. The lights go on, the shows are great, the applause dies down, they shut up shop and they go home. I, w- I wondered then when you came to the theatre, what surprised you most about other work that goes on the Grum? What was the piece of work that you thought, gosh, that, that you know, that, that, was new to you or, or kind of impressed you a bit? There's an extraordinary amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. And I've spoken a little bit there about some of the, the transformational activity that the creative learning and engagement team do, but also all of the work that goes on with um, looking after this jewel in the crown, really, of, of Blackpool's heritage assets. You know, that that is a that's like painting the fourth bridge. The work that goes on <laughs> yeah. into making sure that the ground looks fantastic all the time. That That's a round the clock job. Um, but there's also some really transformational, dynamic work that's taking place in, in our marketing and engagement activity, real depth of digital engagement and content creation. That's a really exciting part of creativity. And, um, you know, we look forward to exploring how we can work with that technology in the future to make a better experience for the audience and to give people more information about the things that they want to hear about. So it's a really, really forward-thinking theatre Blackpool brand and a really, really talented a collection of people uh, behind the scenes, front of house, from the, the people selling the ice creams to the people mm-hmm. working in the fly tower, behind the scenes, etc. There's an incredibly talented group of people. And uh, I feel very honoured and privileged to be to be working uh, as one of the team. Yeah, but well, what is your career path then going from, you know, the, the start to where you are now, the ice cream? I'm, I'm quite fascinated in that. I just think <laughs> I, I do think it's a great story. I think what it does do, it gives people hope for me, you know, that sometimes that, you know, people who may be, let's say, selling ice creams might be on the minimum wage, maybe look at you and go, oh, yeah, but I bet he's this and I bet he's that and I bet he's, you know, something else. It's well connected. But actually, let's like say there's – there's a bit of inspiration and, and and that's that's what I quite like about that. But also um in the community you touched on the theatres and community, Amdram, something that you know, I mean I've certainly taken yeah. part in Amdram and um I know they love coming to the Grand Theatre yeah. because of its, you know, of its presence and the amount of people and stars that have been on that stage and they share that stage as yeah, well yeah. is that something that very much will continue under your reign oh very much absolutely it's uh, it's another part of where i cut my teeth in the big early yeah. days of my career it's um you know where i got uh, access to some fantastic pieces of work that i'd never come across before um you know west side story le Cage of fall i don't know seven brides for seven brothers and what, whatever it might have been back in the day when i was doing those amateur shows um it really sort of it it, it, it really continued to like a passion for theatre and absolutely huge part of what we do on the grand theatre stage and they're not going away and we want to work <laughs> we want to work with amateur and community uh, theatre makers uh, much more as well you know we also have a fantastic studio space we want to see the studio being programmed with some fringe work with some local amateur productions as well really interested in talking to the community who might want to use and be a part of the theatre moving forward um and i think um I think you're right. It's a route in for a lot of people. And going back to those uh, fantastic youngsters I met yesterday um, at the Resilience Conference, wouldn't it be fantastic if for 25, 30 years' time, one of those young children from uh, from uh, the schools that we met yesterday, whether it's Norbrek or um, Our Lady of Assumption, is sitting there, sitting here, yeah. talking to you. <laughs> about Maybe not us. Being, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> about being the new CEO of the ground. And I think that's that's what we really need to be working towards and making sure that everyone as i say is represented on our stage but feels that the ground is it's not mine mm. it's 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 the towns it belongs it belongs to the people of blackpool so yeah just just go back to the career path then what yes, what, what was sorry. yeah so there's more me going <laughs> off on one but yeah just your career path how that sort of started and, and and where did you go and where did it take you obviously you talked about the west end as well yeah so um when i was uh an actor i was um and when I was out of work, which invariably you <laughs> yeah. are from time to time, um, I was selling tickets in the in the call centre for um, the Ambassador Theatre Group in London. And it, you mentioned about people giving you chances, and um, Helen, who was running the call centre, said, "Oh, there's a deputy uh, theatre manager job, maternity cover going. You'd be really good at that. Why don't you give it a whirl?" So I put my name in the hat and um, got given it. And uh, suddenly, I was deputy manager on. Uh, production of Sexual Perversity in Chicago with Matthew Perry, Mini Driver, Hank oh, Azaria. Yeah. Um, sold out. Had, 
you know, baptism fire, learn the job. Yeah. Um, and my boss there was a chap called Glenn Cottenden. He was the theatre manager. He's a Blackpool man. Ah. He actually uh, uh, messaged me on LinkedIn the other day and said, is, is it, have I read this right? <laughs> <laughs> Moving to the ground. Um, so from then, you know, I, I worked on, uh, ended up managing the Trafalgar Studios, which was the first two space theatre in the West End, and then moved to the Savoy Theatre where we opened Legally Blonde. Mm. Um, a wife's favourite show. Oh, a yeah. wife's yeah. favourite yeah. show. Favorite show. She played that herself uh, in <laughs> the lead role. So she's oh, oh, so yeah. anytime oh. it's on anywhere, okay. yeah, we ram dram, whether it's professional product, anywhere, oh, she's obsessed that, with it. Yeah. That was a very special time. Yeah. And Sheridan Smith, who opened Yeah, that, that was show the one. London. Yeah. Uh, we were in the National Youth Music Theatre together. So it was, ah, it was quite a strange. Right, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't, don't mean that. <laughs> um, so, uh, but then I decided I wanted to. Uh, Regional theatre, I really loved. That's that's where my heart was. That's where I grew up. So I decided to to um, move out of London, and that's when I started moving around. So I went first to Belfast to the Grand Opera House over there, uh, and the Waterfront and Ulster Hall in Belfast. Then Edinburgh Playhouse, which is the largest theatre in the country, uh, where I worked with Peter Evans, who is working up at the Opera House, uh, Opera House Winter Gardens. Um, and then to Cardiff, and then to Cheshire, where I'm cur- where I was until yeah. just before this interview, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> running the Lyceum Theatre in Crewe. Um, I've, I've been there for four years. So, uh, as I say, regional theatre is uh, something I'm really passionate about because it's where most people get into this mm. crazy business, which we all love. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And there's um, something else exciting as well. I think you can uh, announce for us about the the Panto, which is, which is a you know a massive draw for the Grand Theatre, I mean, isn't it? And it's a huge. We were talking about this before, yeah. weren't we? That the Panto at the Grand is such an institution, yeah. and you know I don't know any show that pretty much. Like soon as you've watched it, you're booking for next year, oh, yes. and yeah. you don't, and you don't even know what it is, Absolutely. but you're booking for next year. But do you know what, Jen? I think you put the trust in the theatre that they will totally, deliver, and yeah. I think that's it. And I and it sounds awful because because I've been part of being sat in the audience with with my family, my little boy, and I've been part of the people that put it on backstage. And I think it's always a responsibility to be that active and involved in people's Christmases. And I know that the grand really take it super seriously yeah. that they want it to just be spectacular yeah. for, for for anyone who sits down in the theater to just enjoy absolutely it's it the magic you can't beat the magic of pants but can you and uh i came up uh, this year on the 27th of december and the weather was a little bit ropey uh and i watched snow white and to see steve royal you know, just commanding that house and people falling about laughing was just incredible. And also the town, there was such a buzz about the town because of the extension of the illuminations. There were people out on the front. What It was just a fantastic uh, affirmation, really, of coming out of the other side of COVID to sit in the ground and watch Panto and, and see all the illuminations. Oh, that was that was cracking. But to your question, yes, about yes. Who, yes. who is joining who? Steve There's a good tease there. Yes. Um, that was a good build. We we we're, we're really excited to welcome Haley Tamadon uh, to the company this year, uh, and your audiences will know. You know, yeah. she's well known from Emmerdale, from Ooh. Coronation Street, mm. from Dancing on Ice, and also from Soap Star Superstar. Yeah. Um, so really, really excited to uh, welcome her to the show this year. The other thing I'm very excited about with her, she's local. She's yeah, Blackpool girl. Blackpool girl. She's Blackpool girl. We're yeah. the same age and we've been good friends for a long time. I'm so thrilled that she's going to be there because she's Absolutely. just brilliant. She's so talented. And I think lots of people don't know she's from Blackpool because she trained here. She went to school yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, the bright lights call. And yeah. you know, to have that kind of career means you need to, to move around the UK and and work yeah, she's worked for some of the biggest soaps in the country so you can't yeah. always do that from from the fy area no. <laughs> uh, so i'm absolutely thrilled to bits that she's going to be at home this christmas for i'm yeah. thrilled for her and i just know she's going to be amazing it's going to be great isn't it? i mean a blackpool welcome at christmas yeah. in your hometown what you know what more do you want it's yeah. it's going to be superb so yeah do come along Tickets are flying out the doors like hot cake. So, mm. so get in there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Especially that Christmas week. I mean, they might all be sold out already. The Christmas, <laughs> yeah. the Christmas week is it's just, be uh, you really do. That's what I mean. So, well, listen, Adam, it, it's been fantastic to, to have you on you. and, uh, and, and the best of luck in your reign as, as CEO. And it, we're, I think we're really excited about absolutely. The, the changes you'll make and what you'll bring to the theatre and, and anybody as well that, as you talked about, 
um, productions and amdrams and anyone that maybe has written stuff and wants to maybe talk to a theatre, it sounds mm. to me like you are quite an open door to say, just give us a shout and we'll Absolutely. see what we can do. Please do get in touch. Come and have a cuppa. Let's talk about what you want to do. We'd love to hear from you. And really looking forward to meeting people in Blackpool and, and seeing people at the theatre and saying hello. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time, Adam. We really appreciate it. And best of luck um, with your uh, tenure as custodian yeah, yeah. of the beautiful Grand Theatre. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us on Eat Theatre, Sleep, Repeat. Like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>